What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of I'm going to be explaining things. Today, we'll be talking about the reason why I do plugin reviews. Probably a lot of you know what I'm going to say already, but I'm going to try to go in further detail than probably what you're thinking. So I started doing plugin reviews maybe a couple of years ago now. And at first, you know, I reviewed it just casually, you know, and at some point I kind of realized that a lot of the other people reviewing plugins on YouTube, I'm not saying everyone or even a majority of people, but quite a few people are not trustworthy. I'm not sure if people are being paid to say good things only, but some of them may be monetary influenced to not say bad things or are afraid to say bad things, maybe due to the connections they have with the plugin company, or I don't know. It's hard to say exactly what it is, but there's just a lot of people that don't seem to be giving the honest, unfiltered truth. Now it's worth mentioning, I do have connections with a few different plugin companies, including Isotope, Native Instruments, Plugin Boutique, to name a few, and a few other ones as well. If you're wondering whether or not I give my honest opinion about the products though, go watch my review on Isotope RX9. I gave it a bad review because I think it was a really weak upgrade. This is a product I got for free, and I may have messed up my connection with them by giving my unfiltered opinions, but that is how much I care about giving the honest truth to my subscribers. I would rather have one plugin company hate me for telling the truth than to have my 13,000 subscribers hate me for telling lies or not telling the truth. So yeah, that's how far I'm willing to go to make sure I give my honest opinion in my reviews. When I made this realization that there's not a lot of people giving their honest opinions on plugins, I decided to kind of lean into that a little bit more. So that's the whole origin of plugin police essentially. I've, I've seen quite a few videos where people were not uh, being truthful or they were just didn't want to say anything bad. You know, that's not the way a review should be. It should be an honest opinion, unfiltered, unbiased. There shouldn't be affiliate links for the thing you're reviewing in the video if possible. No, what am I saying if possible at all? That shouldn't happen. I actually go out of my way to make sure I do not do that. And if I do plug affiliate links for said product that I have reviewed in the past, it'll be in a different video. You're gonna have to trust me on that one that I'm still giving my honest opinions, but you gotta put some extra food on the table. So yeah, spoiler alert, it's not because I wanna talk shit about plugins. I actually just try to keep it real for lack of a better phrase. I think one of the greatest examples of this was the Unison Drum Monkey fiasco. I don't know how many of you guys remember that. It's probably about six months ago now. But there were so many shady fucking reviews. And I do remember the names of a few people. I don't really want to put them on blast. I kind of want to though, but at the same time, I don't know. It doesn't feel right, especially because it's been a while. But there's so many people that were just like being paid to say positive things about Unison Audio. They don't make very good products. They're also horrible people. I think we could say that objectively because they've copyright striked people in the past for critical reviews. Sorry, I had to go beat the shit out of Steven. He was trying to take money for a review again. Guy has no backbone. But anyway, it, you know, I think that's kind of the biggest motivation for me with reviewing plugins is I see so many people just full of shit or don't know what they're talking about or probably being paid to say only good things. Or some people just only like to say good things about plugins, which I think is whack. There's a lot of bad things with some of these plugins. And to just like skip over that, that's really fucked up in my opinion, because if you have a large platform, or even if you don't, a lot of people are going to see these videos and you could be tricking a lot of people into buying something they actually didn't want. And like, there's no reason to be helping out these companies that are skimping people. There's no reason to, so I don't know. I just, I can't relate to that shit. And I don't know, I guess I care a lot about honesty. If you know of any influencers that are straight up lying to their fans or taking money for false reviews, please let me know about them. Cause I think at this point we just gotta start calling them out. It's fucking lame. Can you imagine having like 50,000 subscribers and then going on to your YouTube channel and then being like, this is the best plugin ever. All right, thanks for the hundred bucks, dude. <laughs> Those suckers believed it. That's what I imagine pretty much. I mean, I'm sure, it, I don't know if it goes down like that, but that's basically, it's only a slight exaggeration from what probably actually happens. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video where I take a bunch of money to lie to you guys for more money. All right, bye.